microscope, parts and its functioning. A microscope is an instrument used to see objects that are too small to our naked eyes. If we look into the history of microscope, perhaps the most famous early pioneers are Hans and Zacharias Janssen of Holland. Janssen's microscope was a tube-like structure. It was capable of magnifying images approximately 10 times when extended to the maximum. In 1665, an English scientist, Robert Hooke, was the first person to use the word cell after identifying pores like microscopic structures in a cork. The microscope used by Robert Hooke is popularly known as Hooke's instrument. He wrote Micrographia, the first book describing observations made through a microscope. By the end of the 17th century, it was Antony van Leeuwenhoek who became the first man to make and use a real microscope. Leeuwenhoek ground and polished a small glass ball into a lens with a magnification of 270x and used this lens to make the world's first practical microscope. Its convex glass lens was attached to a metal holder and was focused using screws. German engineer Max Noll and physicist Ernst Ruska were recognized for the development of the first electron microscope in 1932. Microscopes have come a long way since then. These days, compound microscopes with magnifying powers of 1000 to 2000 times are available. The compound microscope has two systems of lenses for greater magnification, an eyepiece lens and an objective lens. The lens closer to the object to be viewed is referred to as the objective, while the lens closer to the eye is called the eyepiece. This is an eyepiece lens. This lens is usually of 10x or 15x magnifying power. A power of 10x implies magnification of 10 times the size of the object under observation. You look through this lens for viewing the object kept under the objective lens. Objective lenses are present in a rotating mount nose piece. It holds many objective lenses. Usually they are of 4x, 10x, 40x magnifying powers. Total magnification of a microscope is determined by the product of the magnifications of the two lenses, that is the eyepiece and the objective lens. When using a standard 10x eyepiece in combination with the three most commonly used objective lenses 4x, 10x, 40x, the total magnifying power of a compound microscope ranges from 40x to 400x. This is the tube in which the eyepiece lens is fixed. There is another tube which connects the eyepiece to the objective lens holder. It is known as body tube. The body tube separates the objective and the eyepiece and assures continuous alignment 
of both the lenses. There are two adjustment knobs on a compound microscope. One is for coarse adjustment and another is for fine adjustment. This is the coarse focus knob. It is used to bring the object into the focal area of the objective lens. This is the fine focus knob. It is used to make fine adjustments to focus the image. This is the stage that supports the slide. A slide rests on it with the help of a pair of clips. It has an aperture in it that allows light to fall on the specimen for better viewing. This is a rotating disc under the stage known as iris diaphragm. It helps in adjusting the amount of light that reaches the specimen. It is a kind of shutter which can be used to adjust the amount of intensity of light. This is a small mirror which is used to focus light up through the hole in the stage to illuminate the specimen. This is the base of the microscope. The base stabilizes the apparatus. This is the arm with which the upper part of the microscope is connected to the base. Place the slide on the stage over the aperture and gently fix the clips on both sides of the slide to hold it into place. Beginning with the 4x objective, look through the eyepiece. Slowly adjust the coarse adjustment knob until the image comes under focus and adjust the mirror to have more light on the slide if required. Once the content on the slide is visible, do minor adjustment with the fine adjustment knob. To magnify the image more, rotate the nose piece to the 10x objective. To magnify the image to the next level, rotate the nose piece to the 40x objective. There are certain precautions while using a microscope. When moving the microscope, always carry it with both hands. Grasp the arm with one hand and place the other under the base for support. Neither touch the lenses with hands nor try to clean eyepiece lens directly using fingers. When focusing on a slide, make sure the microscope is set to the lowest power of objective lens. Once you have the object in focus, switch to the next higher power objective lens. Start focusing with the low power objective lens first and then focus it under high power if required. Never use the coarse focus with the higher power objective lenses. Always keep the microscope clean and dry. Use lens paper and the cleaning solution 
to clean the lenses. Each time, use a fresh paper to wipe the lens surface. Cell as a basic unit of life. Cells are the basic unit of all living things. Robert Hooke in 1665 was the first to study and record cells by using a microscope. Robert Brown in 1831 discovered the presence of nucleus in a cell. J. E. Porkinje in 1839 gave the term protoplasm to the living contents of a cell that is surrounded by a plasma membrane. The entire content of a cell comprising the nucleus and the cytoplasm is known as protoplasm. In 1838, German botanist Matthias Jacob Schleiden found that all plants are composed of cells. Similarly, in 1839, Theodore Schwann proved that animals are also made up of cells. Rudolf Karl Virchow, a biomedical scientist in 1855, was the first to recognize that all cells come from pre-existing cells by binary fission. So, these last three scientists put together the principles of cell theory which are like this. All living things are made up of cells. Cells form basic unit of all living organisms. All cells come from pre-existing cells. The study of cell and its parts is called cytology. Advanced version of electron microscope has made study of the biological material very extensive and accurate. Cells are the basic unit of all living things. Cells are the smallest structural unit that can sustain all the required functions of life. All organisms are composed of cells. A cell has all the physical and chemical components needed for life. This is Spiroguida. A free-floating filamentous alga, its cells are cylindrical in shape and are connected end-to-end. -end. The cells of an onion skin are generally rectangular in shape with prominent nuclei. This is a monocot plant. Here are the epidermal cells of this plant. Let us compare the cells with the bricks of a wall. The brick is a part of the wall that forms building of different shapes. Similarly, cells arranged in some defined pattern form tissues, which in turn form different organs of a body. Bricks arranged in a systematic manner form a wall. In a similar fashion, identical cells join and form a structure known as tissue. Just compare the organization of small units in both these structures. There are some organisms which are composed of only one cell. These are known as unicellular organisms. They carry out all their functions within a single cell. Euglena is a single-celled microscopic alga. It is a unique organism that has chloroplasts and can make its own food. It is not completely autotrophic as it can also absorb food from its environment. Euglena move by a flagellum which is a long whip-like structure that acts like a little motor Paramecium is a single-celled freshwater animal. It has tiny hair-like things called cilia all around its body. Paramecium moves by beating the cilia 
back and forth, often changing its direction. Amoeba also has only one cell for its entire body. It moves by changing the shape of its body and forming pseudopodia. It also engulfs the food with the help of pseudopodia. There are two main types of cells, prokaryotic cell and eukaryotic cell. These two types of cells differ in many ways. Let us discuss some important differences between these two types of cells. Prokaryotic cell is the most primitive form of life found on the earth. It lacks a defined nucleus as well as other membrane bound organelles. Its DNA is of floating kind and confined to a particular area in the cytoplasm known as nucleoid region. So we can say that a prokaryotic cell has a very simple internal structure as it does not contain membrane bound organelles. Prokaryotes belong to kingdom Monera. Examples of prokaryotes are all bacteria, cyanobacteria and purple bacteria. Eukaryotes are generally more advanced than prokaryotes. Characteristic features of eukaryotes are the presence of defined nucleus, numerous membrane-bound organelles and complex internal structure. There are many unicellular organisms which are eukaryotes. Most protozoa are unicellular eukaryotic organisms. Example, paramecium, amoeba, dinoflagellates. Although they are unicellular but contain defined nucleus and membrane bound other cell organelles. All multicellular organisms are eukaryotes with very well developed cells like humans, dogs, trees, all these have different types of cells forming highly developed systems. Now let us do a small activity to prepare fresh mount of plant tissue. Objective of this activity is to study that living organisms are made up of cells. Procedure for performing this activity, we need glass slide, cover slip, dropper, microscope, needle, onion, iodine solution, forceps. Put a drop of water on a clean glass slide. Cut a small section from the scale leaf of an onion. Use the forceps to peel off a small piece of epidermal layer from the scale leaf of onion. Keep it on the slide gently. To avoid air bubbles, use needle to lower a cover slip onto the epidermal layer. Look at the unstained slide under the microscope. Microscopic view of an onion skin shows several rectangular cells, each with a small spherical nucleus. Add a drop of iodine between the cover slip and slide to obtain a stained view of the epidermal layer. Now again look the epidermal layer through the microscope. 
nucleus becomes slightly more prominent with iodine. The cells have definite shape. This is because of the presence of cell wall. Observation When the slide is viewed through a microscope, rectangular shaped cells of onion peel are visible. Let us do another activity with an objective to study that living organisms are made up of cells. In this activity, sample used will be of cheek cells. Procedure For this activity, we need glass slide, cover slip, dropper, microscope, needle, toothpick, methylene blue solution. Put a drop of methylene blue solution on a clean glass slide. Gently scrape the side of your mouth with the blunt side of a toothpick. By doing so, you collect some of your cheek cells. Transfer the scraping onto the drop of methylene blue solution kept on the glass slide. Use a needle to lower the cover slip to avoid air bubbles. Set it under a microscope. Observe the cheek cells. The nucleus and cell membrane are clearly visible. These cells are irregular in shape, unlike the rectangular shape of the onion cells. Observation When the slide is viewed through a microscope, irregular shaped Cheek cells are visible. Cells are the basic unit of all living things. Most of the cells have three common parts. Cell membrane, nucleus and cytoplasm. This is the nucleus. It is the most conspicuous organelle found in a eukaryotic cell. The nucleus is separated from the cytoplasm by a membrane called the nuclear envelope. The nuclear envelope is a double-layered membrane and it is perforated with tiny holes known as nuclear pores. This dark spherical structure is nucleolus. It is present in a fluid-like medium known as the nucleoplasm. So nucleoplasm is the fluid contained within the nucleus in which the chromatin material and nucleus are present. Chromatin material condenses into a highly ordered structure called chromosomes. Chromosomes carry genes that are units of heredity information. The cytoplasm consists of all of the contents outside of the nucleus and enclosed within the cell membrane of a cell. It is composed mainly of water and comprises of various organelles floating in it. The need of classification. Classification is very important in our life. In general, classification simply means the grouping together of alike things according to common qualities or characteristics. By classifying things into different segments, our life becomes more organized and easy. Let us see two situations and compare them. One situation is where the things are kept organized and the other where they are not. 
the cell membrane controls what moves in and out of the cell. The membrane is selectively permeable. It permits entry and exit of only some substances in the cell. That's why it is known as selectively permeable. The movement of substances across the membrane usually takes place through diffusion. Diffusion. It is basically a spreading out process. Diffusion allows the movement of particles from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. For example, if you drop some ink in a beaker of water, the ink particles would end up spreading out eventually becoming evenly spread out throughout the container of water. After this point, the ink particles would continue to move, spreading to get evenly distributed throughout the water. Plants also exchange the gases through diffusion. The gases diffuse into the intercellular spaces of the leaf through stomata, which are present in epidermal cells. Once the molecules diffuse, they move to the cells that require them. Facilitated Diffusion The molecules, which are not lipid, soluble, are transported with the help of some transport proteins. This type of transport is known as facilitated diffusion. During facilitated diffusion, transport of the molecules is carried out with the help of some carrier proteins. During facilitated transport, carrier proteins assist in moving these large molecules across the cell membrane down its concentration gradient. Like diffusion, no energy is required to transfer the molecules during facilitated diffusion. Sometime, even the carrier protein changes its shape temporarily to deposit the molecule on the other side. There are certain proteins which are globular in shape and have pores that form a sort of channel which help transport molecules in and out of the cell. Diffusion and facilitated diffusion both are passive type of transport and do not require any expenditure of chemical energy. Simple diffusion and facilitated diffusion are considered as passive kind of transport as no energy is required during transfer of substances across the membrane. There is another type of transport in which energy is used. Such transport is known as active transport. If passive transport is like driving your cycle down a hill, then active transport is like using energy to pedal your cycle up a hill. Now let us see how active transport takes place. During active transport, substances are moved against their concentration gradient using some energy. During active transport, a carrier protein acts as a pump that causes a substance to move against its concentration gradient. The sodium-potassium pump carries sodium ions to the outside of the cell and potassium ions to the inside of the cell. Energy in the form of ATP molecules is required for active transport to occur.
when a cell is dipped in any solution the volume of net movement of water in and out of cell depends on the solution's concentration in which it has been kept isotonic hypotonic or hypertonic hypotonic solution when the concentration of dissolved solutes in a solution is less than that of a cell it is known as hypotonic solution animal cell when kept in hypotonic solution swells up due to inflow of water it becomes bloated and at times bursts and dies when plants are placed in water the water enters the plants through osmosis and fills up the cell to its maximum capacity a strong cell wall stops the cells from bursting and provides turgidity to the cell isotonic solution when the concentration of dissolved solutes in extracellular fluid is the same that of a cell it is known as isotonic solution when the concentration of dissolved solutes is the same that is inside as well as outside of the cell the cell is said to be in an isotonic environment this creates a dynamic equilibrium that maintains the status of the cell hence no change takes place in the shape of the cell hypertonic solution when the concentration of dissolved solutes in extracellular solution is less than that of a cell it is known as hypertonic solution animal cell when kept in hypertonic solution results in crenation where the shape of the cell becomes distorted and wrinkled due to the loss of water by the cell when a plant cell is placed in a hypertonic solution the water inside the cells is drawn out by osmosis the vacuoles decrease in size the cytoplasm also shrinks away from the cellular cell wall and the state of the cell is known as plasmolyzed cell this causes wilting in the plant an egg is always a single cell for performing osmosis in an egg we need shell-less eggs a shell-less egg will represent a cell surrounded by a selectively permeable membrane the shell of an egg can be removed by soaking the egg in vinegar as it is made up of the mineral calcium carbonate as vinegar contains acetic acid it dissolves egg shell which is made up of calcium carbonate during this process it releases the gas carbon dioxide in the form of bubbles actually calcium carbonate reacts with acetic acid and breaks down into carbon dioxide water and calcium acetate after the shell has been dissolved only the membrane remains around the egg remove the eggs from vinegar and rinse them gently under the tap water weigh both the eggs egg a weighs 98 grams and egg b weighs 102 grams put egg a in hypotonic solution say water 
dip the egg B in hypertonic solution. It can be thick sugar solution or salt solution in water. Leave overnight. Rinse and weigh again. Egg A is now of 104 grams as egg A was present in hypotonic solution. Water has entered the cell, thus increasing the mass. Egg B weighs lesser than previous weight. Now it weighs only 62 grams. As this was present in hypertonic solution, water from the cell was lost to outside. Due to the loss of water by the cell, weight decreased drastically.